I'm going to share my screen. We're going to continue talking about the long U sound and how it's represented in writing. We saw how it's represented like all vowels. You have the vowel interrupted and sometimes not interrupted by, the, uh, by a consonant and then the E. And the E tells the speaker or tells the writer that the vowel before it is a, is a long vowel. Now, this is the crazy thing about English. Here's one of the crazy things. We're still talking about the long U sound, but there's no U in the word. E, W, sometimes, a lot of times, has the pronunciation of the long U. If I'm looking at a word that I'm unfamiliar with, I sometimes will attempt to pronounce it, but other times I won't. I'll play with it in my mouth. An example would be the AI. I don't know when the AI is pronounced like the long I, I, or when the AI is pronounced like the long A, A. There's this yogurt company. I've never heard it pronounced. So I don't know if it's, if it's show bay or show by. It's, I think it's C-H-O-B-A-I. Something to that effect. I don't know whether it's show bay or show by. I've never heard it pronounced. If I see an EW in a word, my first inclination is to pronounce the long U. I don't even see the E and the W as separate entities. I see them together and it equals for me the long U sound. So let's, let's listen to how the word is pronounced. Screw, screw, flew, the past tense of the verb to fly. It's not the past participle also because the past participle is flown. Stew, knew, the past participle of the verb to know. This is also a homophone because new can be spelled K-N-E-W, past tense of the verb to know, but it can also be spelled in E W and it's something that's not old or that's or something that's recent. Crew. There's new in E W. Jewish. That's the name of a religion. Chewing gum. Chewy gum is what you put in your mouth and you masticate it, but you're not going to swallow it. It's chewing gum. Americans chew a lot of chewing gum. Blue, the past tense of the verb to blow. The past participle is blown. And it's also a homograph with the word blue, B-L-U-E, the color blue. Ooer. Screw again, repeat, chew, to chew, um, past tense to chew, present tense to chew, present uh, simple form, chew, completely uh, regular verb, chewed. Through, through is the past tense of the verb throw. The verb throw in its present, uh, in its simple form and in its infinitive form is throw, past tense, through, but the um, past participle thrown. That's why chew is sort of irregular because you would think me, me to say the present the tense is chow. No, the present tense is, or that the um, present, the simple form is chow, like the other ones or throw and all this or cho, no, C-H-O-W, like blow, no. Choo 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 chewing chewed. Okay. 
brew. A brew, once again, is like two regulars all throughout. And a brew can also be the nickname for a beer. Do you have, uh, uh, what kind of brews do you have? Brew, beer. Sometimes people use it for coffee, sometimes. Few, not a lot. But sometimes depending on the context, the context, it can also mean A lot. I have quite a few complaints. That means I have a lot of complaints. I have a few uh, suggestions. And that means I have a lot. It's a euphemism. Instead of saying a lot, you say a few. But it all depends on the context. Do you, did you get any A's? Yeah, I got a few. That means you got a lot. Do in the mornings on the flowers, the water. Screwy, crazy. If you're screwy, you're crazy. The reason I'm not giving you the um, meaning of the word screw, it has two meanings. Like for example, if you have a, a jar, you screw the top on, no, you screw the top off, you turn it. But screw also has, uh, it's used um, colloquially or, Slang wise, I don't know if it gets to the point of being informal. I don't think it gets to that height. And somebody says, screw you. That's not a nice thing to say to somebody. Screw you. View. You, which is, which is a homograph to Y-O-U-U. -U. Drew, past tense, present, where, now, simple form, infinitive, to draw. The past tense, drew. The past participle, drawn. D-R-A-W-N. -D All these things an English speaker has to memorize. I don't remember memorizing them, but I guess I memorized them when I was in the first, second, third grade. Because if you don't have an education, if you haven't gone to school, a lot of these sentences, a lot of these words, that with the EW, you say them, you say them incorrectly. You don't know how to do an irregular verb because they're very, it's very meaning. It's irregular. It doesn't follow the rule. So you have to learn the exception. Chewy, chocolate chips cookie. I love chocolate chip cookies that are chewy. Ask you, askew, excuse me, askew, excuse me, ask you, askew. Cashew, cashew nuts. Pew, the pew um, that you go into in church. Grew, present tense. No, simple form. Present tense is ing form. The simple form, grow, the infinitive to grow, the past tense, grew, and the past participle, grown. Boo. Now we're looking at the ooh, not with the E-W, but with the O-O, boo. That's a name of affection that people have for their children and some women have for their uh, significant others. Goo, ooze, soon, not now, but not way in the future, soon. Pronto in Spanish, I think. Puro, type of a dog. <coughs> Booze is the nickname or the slang name. I think it's even gotten to the point of being the informal name of alcohol. I want some booze. I want some, you know, alcohol. Gin. I don't know if wine would fit to that in that category. I don't know. But wine does contain alcohol. Gloom. Shoo shoo. Shoo shoo. <laughs> now, in American English, shoo shoo is when you want a, a, like an animal. You don't say this to a human being unless you are disrespecting him or her very much. Or like um, 
an insect and the insect engine goes, shoo, shoo, get out of here. But because of the Haitian influence, shoo, shoo, but it's spelled C-H, I think it's spelled C-H-O-O, C-H-O-O, because the, 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 but it's pronounced shoo, shoo. And no, I think it's spelled C-H-U, I don't know how it's spelled. But anyway, it's pronounced shoo, shoo. And it's like uh, an, an affectionate name. Yeah, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Doom. Broom, what you use to sweep. Room. So we're looking at the OO when it's the long U sound. We already looked at the EW. Now we're looking at the OO. Moon. Moody. Poof. It disappears. You go poof. And it disappears. Roof. Roof. Depends on what part of the United States you're from. If you say roof or roof. I think I say roof. This is ends in F, but it doesn't, it's not like leaf or shelf. It ends in F or wolf, and it's roofs, roofs. But you don't turn the F into a V-E-S. Root or root, depends on what part of the United States you're from. Poop, I'm pooped. That means, this is more informal. Uh, maybe even slang. I'm pooped, that means I'm tired. Spoon is what you eat, a utensil that you eat with, like you eat ice cream with a spoon, but you eat uh, vegetables or meat with a fork. Goon. He's a goon. He's like a big man who's all muscle bound. And um, his job is to be like a bouncer to beat people up. But a goon is not like a bouncer because a bouncer's job is to keep control. Uh, a goon, he goes around and wants to fight people. Ooey. That's ooey. I don't like it. Roost, I think that's the male. Oh no, 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 it comes from, that's right, that's a rooster. A roost, number one, it can be something, like someone tricks you, that's a roost. But one of um, the most famous expression, Malcolm X, 1963, John F. Kennedy, um, President John F. Kennedy had just been assassinated and they wanted his opinion because in those days he was very famous and they wanted Malcolm X's opinion about the assassination of, of the President of the United States, John F. Kennedy. This time he, at, this mo at that time he was a black Muslim and he says, the chickens come home to roost. That means what you, what you sow is what you reap. You get a taste of your own medicine. Goose, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. The goose is the female of the species and the gander is the male. But in that respect, when they say what's good for the goose is good for the gander, they're saying if it's good enough for uh, women, it's good enough for men. Fooey. Like you don't like it. Fooey, fooey, ooey, ooey, fooey. Noose. Uh, this gets a lot of times, and I've done it, mixed up with lose. La lose is L-O-S-E, and that S has a Z sound to it. Lose, uh, to lose something. Loose is when something doesn't fit correctly, it's too big. And that's loose, not lose. Because then it sounds like lose. So here the S has the S sound. Food, food. And we're back to screw, the EW. So we're looking at the long U sound and how the long U is made in English.
the sound. And this is the second set of cards. So you have the EW and you have the uh, OO. The OO has many different sounds as you could, as you probably have seen in the video on, if you looked at the video on the um, diphthong OO. So I want to thank you. This is Kerala Ficklin McLean. Please subscribe to my channel. I would appreciate it. And I want to say thank you. Goodbye and have a great day. Bye.